In a World First study, researchers have uncovered the reason why sharks are less likely to develop cancer. Joining us live is Professor Peter Curry, Director of Research at Monash University's Australian Regenerative Medicine Institute. I appreciate your time, Peter. Thank you. Shark cancer rates are something that I can't say I've ever turned my mind to before. Firstly, just tell us what we know about a shark's likelihood to develop cancers compared with humans and other animals and, and what you've found out about why that might be. Yeah, sharks have been proposed for many years to have a low incidence of cancer. And this particular attribute uh, has been utilised to create an industry around particularly shark supplements or cartilage-related material and has been used to promote them as supplements for cancer sufferers. So we've been studying why sharks have lower rate of cancer and to try and come up with understandings of why that perhaps might be. And it's not any, any property of the tissues or the cartilage of the sharks themselves. They actually just have a low incidence of mutations which are causing cancers. So there's nothing inherent in any of the tissues of the sharks that are cancer pre are preventing. It's just they themselves have this remarkable ability to have low cancer rates. Okay, so it sounds like it might be time for a clean out of uh, some of those supplements from the medicine cabinet. We ran a story before the break about a suspected fatal shark attack in South Australia. So often there's not a whole lot of sympathy, as you know, for the plight of, of sharks and the shark population. But what are you hoping your research will uh, tell us and inform us about in terms of the shark population more broadly and, and how under threat it is? Yeah, so the uh, sharks are apex predators and we sure a pretty dramatic example of that, but they are critical players in the food web of life in the oceans. And not all sharks look like that particular one. Um, most of the sharks that are apex predators in, in food ecosystems are small, uh, rather harmless sharks, but they come under a lot of pressure from fishing, uh, from the fin trade, so where they cut the dorsal fin off the shark and return it to the ocean to inevitably die or in this case, supplements which are unproven. So removing sharks from the food web has a, has a dramatic effect on the overall ecosystem. And it's just another example of where we're adding pressure to the diversity of life in the oceans. So the fact that they have a low incidence of mutation you think might be great. That's great for sharks. Sharks don't get cancer so much, that's fantastic for them. But it's actually a double-edged sword because mutations are what evolution acts on to create the ability to survive crashes in population density, the so-called population bottlenecks. So it's a bad message for sharks. Not only are we needlessly um, harvesting them for useless supplements, they all ha also have a low ability to rebound from low population densities that such fishing practices produce. So sharks are amazing creatures. They have an amazing biology. I'm sure all the surfers that surf off that point where that poor man uh, had the attack, would say that they are a part of our ecosystem and uh, an incredible um, uh, source of a rich understanding of how life works. So we're fascinated by that and their biology. And now we want to know why they have a low rate of cancer, because if we understand why they have less mutations, maybe we can slow that process in ourselves. That would be good. Peter, continue the research. We'll check in with you and uh, keep in touch. We'd love to hear about any further developments. Thank you so much. Thank you for your interest.